is if you have offended her greatly. Yes. You will pretend that he's in love with you. <laughs> he has a paper about <laughs> as you come there and just do. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. You know it's Ada here, Ada Unleashed. If you're a new subscriber, thanks for tuning in. And if you're an existing subscriber, you know you're an OG. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a Happy Father's Day edition. Meet my father. Like a father Q&A tag. Dad, do you want to say hi to my subscribers? Hello, fellow subscribers. <laughs> How are you? Happy Father's Day. So you've heard from my dad. Without further ado, let's dive right into this video. So welcome back my loves. I think we're just gonna get right into it. Today I'm going to be asking my father some questions. Before we started, he asked to see the questions and I'm like, I just want to actually take him on a rest, you know, get his responses and his reaction before he actually responds to the questions. So I got these questions off the internet and if they are questions you just typically ask your father. Yeah, so this is just to, you know, celebrate Father's Day and also, you know, try to actually get to know some things about him so guys let's just get right into it let's start with the first question daddy yeah. what do you remember about the houses you lived in as a kid as a child and which one did you like the best well as a child i grew up with my grandmother and uh, i always recall the way she was handling me and my siblings because i was born in uh, delta states and at a certain stage we came back to the village my father traveled to the far away Ebony State, Abakaliki in particular, and I was left with my grandma. I stayed with her, I think maybe at the age of nine, ten. I was just staying with her and doing errands. What still. do you remember about the houses? How did the houses look? In Amorbia, the house then was a thatched roof. Good, style mud good, houses. mud house, yes. Okay. On weekend like this, an instruction is given to us to scrub the mud where we sleep. Sometimes aunt, you know, this aunt will bite <laughs> you in the night and uh, you wouldn't feel very happy. Oh. But at a stage, I grow used to staying yeah. with my grandmother. Yeah, and she loved to. me very well. I always go to farm with her and come back carrying cassava or yam sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Typical village life. Yes, okay. village life. Let's move to number two. Environments I grew up in. What did you have as a child that kids today do not have? What I have that is lacking among you and your siblings is that closeness to your grandmom. Very few children stay with their grandmother today and I really learned a lot from her because my grandmother was actually a disciplinarian. And of and course, that's you, why you took you after her. Like, you're a you don't like too. the spirit because <laughs> when he's going to farm and they are not going with her, she will tell you what to do. Do this, do that. If she comes back and you leave any of them undone, going out to play, you are in trouble. <laughs> Dad, do yeah. you remember when you told us that if you don't do what she tells you to do, the pain? Well, uh, of course, sometimes <laughs> because he's a woman. And me being a very young child, child yes. you can always escape from her because she can't catch you. So sometimes you will grind pepper in the mouth, she will be <laughs> chewing pepper and talking to you <laughs> as, you <laughs> as you draw closer. That is if you have offended her greatly. Yes. You will pretend that he's in love with you. <laughs> he has a paper in your mouth as you come there and just do. <laughs> and you cry and the somersault and that, you know. But oh I, as I God. grew up, I begin to know that you actually meant well for me, to be frank with you. Yeah. And that discipline remained in me. You have to uh, tidy the house where you, you live in. On to us. You don't yes. have to play too much. You must bend and do what you are instructed to do. That, that, that's what I think is a very nice value mm -hmm. to inculcate in children. Yes, that's a nice response. Yeah. So, has anything ever happened at a family wedding that you will never forget? You mean my own wedding? Any wedding. There is nothing unusual that happened in my own wedding, but it was an interesting thing because it was not the way the weddings were done in those days. Uh -huh where you have to invite a uh, few people will come you are about maybe within a circle of friends you do your wedding and it's all over and it's not as expensive as what you have today but today you have to invite people from lagos people from kaduna people from this in for a wedding which i think in the real sense was not very necessary but uh, 
women be what they are, sometimes you have to give in and yes. allow them to have the best of yes. the Yes, they usually the say a white wedding yes. is for a woman. Yes. What is your occupation? I'm an engineer by profession, you know. Uh, that is uh, exactly what I was telling you, the spirit of hard work. Uh, I finished my secondary education in 19. Taught a little bit in my secondary school. I traveled to Bauchi to join a construction company after school start. I worked with the construction company for about one year and then my uncle that was staying in Medugri invited me to Medugri. Throughout my secondary education, I was a science-based student. So as I got there, my uncle was asking me whether I would want to work in the post and telecommunication or what we call then P and T. I said yes. Wherever he choose for me to work, I will be happy. I got an appointment with Central Bank. I got an appointment with uh, another, other, many other places invited me for, for work with school start compared with what is happening today. And then eventually I joined my uncle in PNT and we stayed in Medugri. From there I went for training to Kanu, trained for some few years. It was not easy for me to continue because I really wanted to upgrade my education to move away from technician because I was employed as a technician. So I had to work very hard and uh, in Kano I got admission. I was admitted into Anambra State uh, University. University of Technology then, Asutec, where I studied uh, engineering, electrical engineering precisely. And I finished there and I was called back to PNC. Then PNC had moved from post and telecommunication to Nigerian telecommunication. No, because nice before, uh, before they were all together, they were merged with Nigerian Postal Services and the telecommunication part of the company. But with emergence of the merger, telecommunication was on its own, which is an engineering-based uh, company. So that was where I continued working in Lagos, stayed in Kaduna for some years, precisely in the International Exchange. And that's where I was till we were exited in 2010. Hmm. Yes. Atiku was then the uh, chairman of the privatization council as deputy president. Okay. Yes. And uh, Aero 5 then was the director general of privatization, a uh, body that is meant to privatize most of these companies. And he was sitting at the helm of affairs mm -hmm. during Niger privatization. So it's not an article that bought uh, Nigeria okay. Telecommunication. Okay, it was just a yes. Okay. My intention to study law came very late in my life, and so I wouldn't say this a profession I would be very, very active in. I just took it as a retiring profession because I love being called a learned man. <laughs> yes, they were that telling us that no matter how educated, whether you are an engineer or this, if you are not a lawyer, you are not yet learned and I intend to practice it and justify my remaining part of years mm -hmm. in that profession. Mm -hmm. That's nice. How many siblings did you have? Oh, we were nine in number. My parents gave birth to nine children, seven strong men and uh, two strong women. And not all of them are alive today. Mm -hmm. My immediate senior brother died in 1985 and uh, we just remember five uh, men and Guys, there are twins women. in your family, right? Yes. I'm definitely going to have twins in my family and nobody can tell me otherwise. My dad has siblings as twins and my mom has siblings as twins as well. There is no way I'm not going to have twins or triplets as my kids. Absolutely no way. My mom gave birth to two twins. The one I senior directs and the one that was after that very one. Mm. He had two twins but he lost one of them. That in that age, I was one be a twin before those uh, two siblings. Oh, so there were two pairs of twins. Yes, wow. that's what I mean. Wow. They had two twins. But mm. two of them are no longer alive today. Yes, the one that I senior direct died just December twenty twenty one. If you think of some relatives that have passed away in the last few years, what would they be doing right now if they were with you? Eric, that I lost in nineteen eighty one, was a twin was a very close ally of mine. We were very close. And uh, he's one I can always rely on. If you ask him any question, if he tell you 
this is the situation. You have no reason to doubt Daddy, him. Daddy, how did he pass but, uh, away? Which family member has been your greatest coach in life? Our senior bride, you know, the first child we have in our family from my mother and my father I was a woman. Yes. Uh, has been shouldering the family responsibility quite well. Uh, wherever, whatever that is happening at all and I'm not there, uh, I wouldn't have anything to fear because he will ex do exactly what I am expected or I would be expecting from him. So because of that, we are also close. He's still alive. He's the one at two. The retired uh, policeman. Uh, police, police, pretendants of police. We say very yeah. I still remember when when uh, we were in the village. I think that was in 2006. And then there was something happening in Anambra. And then we saw Papa out of the window. We're like Papa, Papa. I think he was kind of directing. You know, there was traffic along. I don't remember what road that was. But okay. something. Papa was in charge. They okay. were like Papa, Papa. We we're so happy to see him. Yeah. Yes, that is his problem. He was a policeman. Yes, yeah. okay, so Papa, when you were a teenager, which family member did you go to for advice? And looking back, was it a good advice? Well, as I told you, my uncle that worked with PNC, he was a very senior technical officer that I later joined uh, in Medukri. After the Civil War, he stayed at home for some time and uh, used to encourage us and give us the necessary advice to work very hard for the future, that if we don't work hard, the future may be very, very bleak for us. And uh, I bought into that idea and the promise to be like him, because then he was riding a bicycle, and you know what it takes to have a, a rally bicycle in those days? If you own a bicycle, you are like uh, a rich man. Uh -huh. So with that bicycle, was, Allah sent me on errand, allowed me to ride his bicycle, and I'll be very happy. And looking at him as a very successful man, I have to throw his parts mm -hmm. that whatever I want to do, I must ask him. When I finish my secondary school, that time you can send the telegram. They call it Ekwaya uh, in Ibo land, you know. So I call, I send the telegram to him, told him my school certificate result, and he was highly impressed. I said that if I would want to work in PNT, I should come straight to, to Medugri, where he was then. Uh, transferred to. But before reaching Medugri, I stopped briefly at Bauchi State, where I worked with Sejin, Society General uh, Company, a French company, mm. and also worked for other companies. But at a stage, I felt that I should reach Medugri and have discussion with my uncle. And that was from where I joined PIT through his own personal effort. So looking back, it was definitely yes, good advice. He was a very good man to me. and. Uh, I bought into his advice and it helped me in life. What was your favorite movie or book when you were a child? Things Fall Apart, The Saint yeah. of the Novo, uh, Great no. Anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love Things Fall Apart. I also love the author because it was a wonderful <laughs> book, Chino Achebe, in those days. But of course, you know, I'm more engineering, technically based. So reading novels and other things was not part of my life. But you made uh, us read but, them. Uh, yes, because I know it was going to help you. Mm -hmm. And there is no other way you can study English, which is compulsory in the school, that to read as many books as possible. Even when there is a, a, a level of reading you will reach, you can start writing books mm -hmm. without knowing. And that is my idea of encouraging you people to read as much as you can. One, you wouldn't have a problem in, in English language in school. You will not have a problem in mathematics. These are the key subjects that you require. And I think it helps you people. It really did. It really yes. did. It really moved yes. us to be great. Tell me a story about a family reunion or family party that you remember attending as a child. Well, as you know, partying today is not the same way you look at partying in those days. We normally have our Christmas period, that is when you do most of the parties. Mm. You have all that traditional festivals that uh, you join masquerade. That is just purely village life, which I am used to. And uh, we also have young girls, you know, gathering to learn certain dancing steps in the village and they dance around during the festivals. It makes us feel very happy moving around, visiting people unlike now. To visit somebody is a problem. But in those days, we can move from our community to my grandmother, stay there 
playing with so many people from there, you can go to your mother's uh, sister's place, mm -hmm. stay freely, and they feel very comfortable. And it makes you happy and feel to be on top of the world. That was the life we enjoyed in those days. When I fell from a bakery, my mother went to a came again. I two of us were left with other boys. So we were playing. At a stage, I pointed at one pier. That pier, I've been looking at it and that today I must block it. As I climbed the tree, Victor also climbed. Two of us went there, we were struggling on who will reach the pier before the other. And all of a sudden, the branch of the tree pulled off. I found myself on the ground. Before I know it, I, I was in uh, Adazi.